Ah, sundews. They're cute, sticky, and quite insatiable plants. From tropical rainforests to arid deserts, plants among the genus Drosera have found a way to survive around the globe. Within the near 200 species of sundews exist different subgroups as well, such as tropical, temperate, tuberous, pygmy, and woolly. While things could be narrowed down even further with descriptions like climbing, fan-leaved, and rosetted, this episode of Growing Carnivorous Plants will be entirely about the cultivation of tropical sundews. Welcome to Hypnotic Exotics. Drosera capensis, Adelaide, and Bermanii are all fine examples of tropical sundews. But what exactly qualifies a sundew as tropical? We can begin by taking a look at their native range around the world, more specifically the continents or countries these plants call home and the climate of those locations. Doing so will give us an idea of what conditions these tropical plants prefer and allow us to make informed decisions while preparing a habitat for their cultivation. Tropical sundews are commonly found in Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, South America, and Southeast Asia. All of these locations share three major environmental factors that make these places the perfect home for tropical sundews. They all have warm climates year-round, a moderate to high relative humidity, and little to no seasonal change. With these three environmental components established, let us use every bit of information available and take a look at how people in the carnivorous plant community grow their own tropical sundews. More often than not, tropical sundews are grown indoors inside a terrarium utilizing the ambient temperatures of the home. High humidity is the main motivation behind using such an enclosure because it provides a controlled space for the water to saturate the air. I personally grow all of my sundews indoors, specifically in a mini greenhouse equipped with fluorescent lights. Growers in climates with an average humidity above 50% can often get away with growing their tropical sundews on a windowsill. Household temperatures tend to be just fine for these plants and supplemental humidity, while beneficial, is not required. Others grow them in a warm greenhouse or have taken great care to acclimate these plants to their conditions. Sundews can be very tolerant of less than satisfactory conditions and are often referred to as a weed in people's collections. They can be grown outdoors in part sun as well, as long as the temperatures stay above 60 degrees Fahrenheit and the humidity around the plant is sufficient. Regardless of location, majority of the community waters their plants via the tray method, with their pots sitting in a tray of water no deeper than one quarter of the height of the pot. With this information established, let's take a quick look at the six key variables that need to be accounted for to best grow these plants. They are soil, water, light, temperature, humidity, and fresh airflow. To properly account for these variables, some supplies will be needed. You will need a tropical sundew. I've chosen a Drosera capensis, which I had propagated from leaf cutting earlier. A sufficiently sized pot, peat moss, perlite, rinsed silica or quartz sand, which is optional, distilled water or water that has been filtered by reverse osmosis, a water tray, a bag large enough to fit the entire potted plant, a south, west, or east facing window that receives no less than four hours of direct sun, or a light with a minimum color temperature of 5000 Kelvin, preferably 32 watts or greater. It's best to overshoot with power in my experience as the lights can always be raised if leaf burn occurs. And then, for the light, you will also need a 24 hour outlet timer. Now that we know what's necessary in order to be successful growers, let's start off with what might be the most important step, selecting a proper location. Like I had mentioned prior, I choose to grow all of my sundews in a mini greenhouse with fluorescent lights. But, since that might not be the most realistic option for some people, I've chosen to grow this plant on an east-facing windowsill, acclimating it to the ambient humidity of the home. Alright, let's get this guy potted. This Drosera capensis will be in a standard 3-inch pot. 
In media consisting of two parts peat moss, one part 20 grade quartz sand, and one part coarse perlite. You may also use a 1 to 1 ratio of peat and perlite if you prefer. Fill the pot with soil in any manner you like. Just be sure to hydrate the media well prior to introducing the plant, because the peat moss can be quite difficult to saturate once it's all potted up. And now that we have the pot filled with soil, it's time to make a hole for the roots of the plant. Using your finger or a tool of your liking, push it through the center of the soil, making a hole straight down slightly deeper than the roots of the plant. Now, take the plant and guide the roots into the hole, making sure not to damage them in the process. Push the sides of the soil in around the base of the plant to firmly anchor it into the media. Once planted, add more soil if needed and thoroughly water the pot from above. Doing so will allow for the soil to fill any cavities created during the planting process. Now that we have this little dude potted up, it's time to make the finishing touches. Place the pot in an appropriately sized water tray and fill with carnivorous plant safe water until the depth is about one quarter of the way up the pot. To prevent root rot, be sure to refill it only when the tray is dry. I also advise rinsing the tray and flooding the pot once in a while to prevent the buildup of salts and other water soluble solids, both of which can be very harmful to the plant in the long run. Now, we need to acclimate the plant to its new home. A smooth transition in humidity is the main objective. Doing so will decrease the amount of shock for the plant and allow it to focus more on adapting to the new soil and light levels. This is why we need the bag. It's pretty straightforward. All that is needed is to place the plant into the bag. The type of bag or method for providing this transition is pretty freeform. I do like to cut some holes in the bag as well, as this introduces some fresh airflow and will help reduce the likelihood of rot during the acclimation period. Now that we have this tropical sundew, potted, watered, and bagged, all we need to do is open the bag more and more every two or three weeks and keep an eye out for any signs of pests or rot. What plants have you grown on a windowsill? If you have any tips for these botanical endeavors, let me know in the comments. And not just care tips. If I'm pronouncing something incorrectly, providing you with the wrong care information, or simply just boring you, let me know. Because my goal for this channel is to provide high quality, accurate content about these peculiar plants, and I can't do that without your help. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.